this is really impressive for doing it from like homemade stuff in just a very small library. So like definitely take pride in that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just going to play it down since it's only 38 seconds. I'm just going to play the whole thing and then we'll uh we'll talk about it and it's not going to be too too long, but we'll go like 10-15 minutes of just giving some quick advice. So don't be taken aback if I'm just like hammering notes at you. Um, just because yeah, I'm trying to keep these videos like, shorter. Okay. <laughs> if you want me to like say anything besides like understand, I understand. Um, ask a question and we're making it. No, obvious. yeah, no so worries, no worries. If if there's like a big question where you like really don't understand what I'm saying, totally interrupt me. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Um, all right. So three, two, one, go. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, great. So here we go. Uh, first of all, how'd you get the voices? Uh, so I paid for people on Fiverr. Oh, that's um, great. That's that's smart. Yes. Good job. All right. I tried doing the link one myself, and it didn't turn out good. So, <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I I think my favorite part of this is honestly your impacts on the shield from the sword. Um, they're not necessarily like the hardest hitting, most aggressive impacts, but they have this cool resonant character to them, which I think you did well. Um, especially when he charges up, when Pit charges up, it starts really wailing on him. Uh, it's cool. You And it sounds, I don't know if you use pots and pans for that or what, but there's... So what I did, um, I got one of those metal like foldable chairs and I just had a bat and I just hit it a lot in my backyard <laughs> awesome um <laughs> i mean it could be argued that the resonance and the tone might not be right for what you know his hyrule shield is and stuff but just as metal hits i like that you showed the understanding of this is a cool hit because it has a character that cow 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 thing that like happens when he when it it's hard to recreate with your mouth but that that tonal <laughs> sound when he <laughs> When he when he hits and that you kind of raise the tone for the last one for the it showed a progression and it made the fight kind of a complete sentence you know that sequence of the fight so that was really good um, I'd think maybe about how resonant it actually is they sound a little too resonant for a shield that's attached to his arm so the ways you can fix that is you don't let them ring out as long you simply fade them out sooner um, but that's really cool. Um, one general note about this is it's kind of an anime style scene, right? So anime has a very different sound style than games made in the West. So it's hard for me to give feedback in that context. See, for anime, this actually has a lot less wrong with it because, and when I say wrong, I'm not trying to say objectively wrong, right? It's just in my opinion wrong. Um, right. but you know, anime generally, as you know, has like these lighter kind of fluffier sounds, that are more indicative of swiftness and lightness. And so anime always has very kind of smaller sounds, a little bit noisier sounds. When I say noisy, I mean like higher end, you know, whoosh, 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 that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna like ignore those notes for now, like the weight notes with like the anime and things like that, because it's not, you know, it can be interpreted either way. The main thing I wanna talk about right now is the arrows. Um, oh boy, okay. The arrow buys. So that does just sound like a stick kind of being whipped in front of a mic. Oh, no. <laughs> um, that's what it was, hangers. <laughs> right. So, and that's that's a good layer, but um, it takes you out of the scene when you hear that, especially because it doesn't feel like they were processed or, or edited in a way that they felt like there were arrows going away from me. It kind of just felt like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. and so it, it just felt like someone was waving a stick next to my ear with my headphones on with arrow with things going away from you like this especially with arrows and you actually showed this when she when sorry when pit shot back um i don't remember where that was yeah this part 
See, you put a tone with the arrows here, which was really good. Um, you know, it's a little wispy, the tone. It's kind of a... You know, it would have been nice to have more of a solid kind of like... Or something that was kind of a little more solid and aggressive because he's shooting straight down at him. But it shows that you understand that those arrows needed a tone, which is good. And I would I would put that on the other arrows as well um, that are being shot up at him. Those tones actually would fit better for the arrows going up at, at pit. It kind of feels like those are going away from me. See, these ones, it doesn't feel like they're moving slow enough. Do you know, do you feel that when you watch it? Um, I know you, you've been listening to the scene over and over again, so it might be hard to pull yourself out of it. But um, when you see those arrows landing next to him at that really high rate of speed with those big light things, does it feel like that sound um, does it justice? Or, or what, do you feel like you feel anything missing there? Um, so what what I was going for originally, the reason why Lynx arrows just sounds like a stick and why those have the tone um, mm -hmm. is because in my head, those were like magical arrows. They're right, like okay. Blue. So I, it, that was my attempt to give him a magical element. But I, I do see what you're saying about, I think it's it's like the Doppler effect is going away, but I could have made it the other way around. Oh, you're using a is Doppler plugin? I, I'm not on that one, but that's how I'm visualizing in my head is like, it sounds like it's it like fades away instead of like coming towards them, it which makes more sense. Like, because <laughs> that's what we need to hear there, right? Yeah. Like intense, yeah, like, exactly. like, and that's more lasery when it comes yeah. to my mouth, but you get what I'm like, the character and the intensity and the, the envelope um, of the sound. Right. Absolutely. Um, so let's, um, and the impacts need, need a bit more don't be afraid of magic stuff i would really uh encourage you to kind of go at it a bit more with with magic um because the impacts need some kind of magical um effect there um um play around with filtering things uh play around with um if you needed a library to help with magic stuff boom has a good one um called magic i think <laughs> i think it's called all i know is <laughs> the files have mads at the head of it which is magic design i don't remember exactly the name actually i can look at it right now what am i talking about yeah magic it's this one if you can see this oh, okay um and they have a whole like a fire arrow electric arrow there we go see these sounds do get a bit noisy and you don't hear them now, but you'll hear them when this video goes up. And so I would do something about the noise. There are denoisers you can use. There's a high end you can take out. So this library is good, but it's a bit noisy and it's a bit um, too wishy-washy, too So. Uh, watch out for that with that. But that's a good library at least to listen to for some ideas and think about how um, things could be processed with what you have available. Uh, let me listen to see if I have any other. So the the the, the hook shot is good. Um, it's a little awesome. it's a little clanky. It's a little kind of old old sounding. Um, but so there are ways that you can make the chain sound bigger. Um, you can add low end. You can filter off parts that make it sound clanky so that it's kind of a cleaner um, hook, you know, or, or chain pull sound. Um, but we won't get too into that because it's not as. Your metal rings I'd work on a bit, man, just because they're, they're a little small. Um, and I know you don't really have the library source. For that, uh, you're probably just making those on your own, right? Yeah, for this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're really good for being homemade. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I mean that as a compliment, right. but also it's like, I just know that these need to, um, I can send you a scene that you can reference for it, um, but they're just a little too only high-endy. They're just too kind of small in the high end. And so it makes the sword feel a lot smaller than it is. And it's a good layer to have because it gives it definition. It gives it kind of an elegance, but I would definitely add a, a lower... Um, bigger metal thing i'm trying to think of what you would record or reach for because in my library i have a bunch of different metal things and i can go through them but for someone who doesn't have a library um 
I guess it's not as important well, specifics, but just knowing that and just knowing that when you listen to that, that you hear this is too too thin, too tiny to be the only element playing. I need to add a bigger, you know, and metal you're talk, thing. You're talking about the metal specific. I'm talking about the metal right? resonance when they're swinging. Yeah. Maybe I could just take the sound I recorded and frequency shift it down. It's it's it won't uh, work. It'll be um it'll be too narrow banded. Hmm. So it'll just it'll be a very thin mid range one then. Even if you layer them together, it'll just it'll. You can try it, of course. You know, figure it out for yourself. But just in my experience, it won't it won't really get the um. You need something with a wide frequency range that rings. Um, something that is a bigger thing that resonates metallically. That. Because this right now, it sounds like, um, you know, you, you lick your finger and you're like rubbing the rim of a wine glass or something, right? Where, where, which right. is like what we really need is like a, you know, it's the it's the sword of time or whatever. You know, it's, it's like this epic weapon that has deadly intention and is extremely powerful. And so we need to have a really cool a ring with it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, this is good, man. Just uh, if you have any other questions about this, hit me up. Um and uh yeah just just do what you can get your hands on some libraries man that's my my biggest thing and i don't want it to feel like it's a pay to win kind of thing but it definitely you know you're this is really impressive for doing it from like homemade stuff and just a very small library so like definitely take pride in that i don't want to like that point to be you know skipped over too quickly like this is um I think when you get a good library in your hands, you're going to be able to create some really cool stuff because this scene definitely shows that you understand kind of how the scene should sound. A lot of it sounds like a real thing when I'm watching it. You know, I'm just picking out the stuff I don't like right now. So um, a lot of this, like, a lot of the movements, um, the foley, a lot of those whooshes are good too, especially in the anime context, right? They might be too small if it right. was like more of a Western traditional, like, but for this, it's like it fits. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for looking at it, dude. I really appreciate it. No problem, man. Anytime. Um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Dude. yeah it's cool. Dude, I'm excited for you. Feedback. Dude, I'm so pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to redo this with some libraries that I bought and just like, I'm going to blow you away, dude. Oh, Sweet. please. I'm ready, man. You're going to be like, what, dude? <laughs> How'd you make this? That's my goal. <laughs> I'd start with the arrows. Start with those. And then go to the sword. Gotcha. And then um, any of the magic stuff, especially like when Link shoots his arrow and stuff. Listen to some other anime stuff that has swords and newer stuff. Gotcha. That is that is the goal. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All right. Well, I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. And uh, hit me if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, have a good night, man. Yes, I definitely will. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Thank you so much, dude. I'll <laughs> catch you later. Of course, man. Night. Night. <laughs> so just got off our call. Um, Dietrich was a really nice guy. Really like super sweet guy. I was not expecting that. Um, super friendly. Very into the craft. Very excited to improve. I mean, I'd hire that guy just to have him around the office because he seems like such a cool, just like good personality to have. Um, and, you know, I think he's going to do really well. Uh, just super optimistic. These are the people who, who don't even have to be that good at it and they just get hired because people love him. But uh, luckily for him, that's not his case. He's, he's going to be good. He already is. Uh, he just needs to get his, his hands on more libraries. He needs to get um, a little bit more experience. Um, and I think if he stays focused, uh, in a year or two, he'll be, uh, his name will be at the end of some really big projects. So, um, yeah. Anyway, to all you guys, thanks so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed or you got something out of this, please let us know. I answer every comment. Um, uh, like, and a subscribe for the YouTube algorithm as always is uh, appreciated. And, uh, yeah, I hope everyone has a good night and is uh, staying safe and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>